Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, a former vicar who bullied and psychologically abused men and boys was protected by a church culture where he was untouchable. That's the finding of an independent review which found 27 victims of Reverend Jonathan Fletcher were failed by the Emmanuel Church in Wimbledon. The Metropolitan Police is gathering information about the allegations, including one involving a sex act. One of the victims has agreed to waive his anonymity for an exclusive broadcast interview with Channel 4 News. Lee Fernie says Jonathan Fletcher invited him to take part in naked massages, and he claims there are more victims of sexual abuse. For decades, a dark secret lurked in the shadows of this evangelical church in suburban South London. Today, Emmanuel Church has shone a light on it, with the publication of an independent review into dozens of allegations of abuse against the former vicar here, the Reverend Jonathan Fletcher. He lives here. Today's report raises many, many questions for Reverend Fletcher, questions he today isn't prepared to answer. There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, Micaiah, the son of Imla. But I hate A vicar for 30 for years, the 78-year-old was described as charming and charismatic. And but in 2017, five years insane, after his retirement, he was banned from preaching and after and claims said, of spiritual abuse. Today, a review by safeguarding charity 31.8 details the scale of what his 27 victims endured, including naked massages and saunas, forfeits including smacking with a gym shoe, and ice baths, and a serious incident of a sexual nature. The review concludes that the bullying and spiritual abuse was known about before his preaching ban in 2017, yet little or no action was taken to address this by leaders at Emmanuel Church. The current vicar told us today he was profoundly sorry. You, amongst others, facilitated an abuser. I'm not sure I'd want to use the word facilitation, because that makes it sound like it was deliberate and deliberately complicit. But it is true that we did not listen carefully enough to the voices that were pointing out the wrong things in him. And for that, I am truly sorry, and Emmanuel Church is truly sorry. Would you agree that you inadvertently facilitated an abuser? Yes, I would say that we did. The allegations against Fletcher emerged after this programme broadcast abuse claims about another leading evangelical and barrister, John Smythe, in 2017. Why did these young men have to bleed for Jesus? There's no question of that at all. Smythe and Fletcher were involved in the same Christian summer camps, also attended by the Archbishop of Canterbury, who has today reiterated an apology to all victims of church abuse. Lee Fernie lived with Fletcher when he was a 30-year-old apprentice learning about the teachings of the church. He's decided to waive his anonymity to speak out in the hopes this will give others the courage to do so too. Things started well. Uh, I was getting good feedback from the course I was on in the centre of London. Uh, everyone at Emmanuel was saying that I was doing well, and Jonathan himself seemed to appreciate uh, my work, um, but a little bit uh, too much. Uh, so he used a lot of uh, flattery. Uh, invasive questions uh, started to come along, inappropriate ones, and he seemed very keen to move you to the uh, sports uh, court, uh, squash or, or tennis, and it seemed that he wanted to get you into the, the sauna afterwards. And then he became quite forceful in suggesting for me to have a professional uh, massage, uh, independently so. And uh, at that point, um, I laughed in his face. I, I didn't have any interest in, in a professional uh, massage. No, he persisted a couple of times. And then after uh, failing to do that, uh, then he became abusive to me, but in a, in a different way, in a psychological way. Unknown to me, uh, that seems to be the hook uh, that he uh, used in order to, um, to groom people and uh, to bring people in. So that will progress to him off to do the massage himself, um, a nude massage uh, to people, uh, give them ice baths. 
And for a number of people, uh, he was sexually uh, abusive as well. And this is uh, systematic abuse. Jonathan Fletcher has never been charged with any criminal offence. And when he's been asked about these allegations, he's always said that anything that took place was totally consensual and non-sexual. What do you say to that? Well, first of all, there's an issue of consent. Uh, so with the power differentials, um, consent uh, would be uh, relative. And uh, I don't think um, the issue of consent has been rightly handled uh, in his uh, responses. Uh, he was a very powerful bully and it was very difficult to say no to him. Just a quote from the report. It says, it's clear that bullying and spiritual abuse was known about prior to 2017 and little or no action was taken to address this by role holders and leaders. To put it bluntly, do you feel that there was a cover-up going on? There was certainly collusion with uh, Fletcher. Uh, people knew that he was a bully and they helped him to be a bully. We were promised a review that would name names and there's not one name mentioned within the review. So would you like the Church of England itself to carry out an investigation and a review now? I think what is needed in the Church of England is clear and strong leadership uh, to make sure that uh, abuse is eradicated from the church. It would be good to see Justin Welby himself uh, to get in touch with victims, and not just for the Fletcher uh, abuse, but also the Smythe use, and to engage with uh, the people who have been abused in order to uh, affect some change and listen to them for what's needed. Has the Archbishop reached out to you? Would you like to meet him over this? Well, I've actually received an offer from Welby uh, to meet him, which I think is very strange indeed, when uh, the Smythe victims have been waiting for so long. I think it's uh, nine years ago uh, that uh, people made a formal report about Smythe's abuse at that stage. Uh, Justin Welby promised that he would meet with people, and he's broken that promise. He hasn't met with them. And yet, on the other hand, uh, I've got a personal letter from him uh, inviting me to meet with him. It's just not right. Have you responded to that letter? I have not responded. I don't think it's appropriate. I think he should um, be uh, replying uh, to the Smythe victims, first of all. In order for people to trust the church and to have any confidence uh, in uh, going along and, and hearing more, and that would depend on how well the, uh, the church deals uh, with this cancer and shows whether they're serious about welcoming people into a safe environment. And just finally, what impact has all of this had on you? So I suffered psychological abuse, others suffered uh, physical and sexual abuse and it, it knocks you sideways so that's uh, affected me for, for many years and by affecting me it then uh, affects others. Lee Fernie, thank you very much for talking to us today. Thanks very much. Well, in response to these comments, a spokesperson for the Archbishop of Canterbury said that he had met some of the survivors of abuse by John Smythe and Jonathan Fletcher and remained committed to meeting and hearing from survivors. In addition, the Archbishop, Justin Welby, said he was deeply sorry for the abuse that was carried out by both men and that his continued prayers are with Lee Fernie and all victims of abuse.